Good afternoon or good morning or good evening whenever you watch this. Um, I'm here again and keeping you updated on what's happening at the Ferme de Lettres. It's, uh, it's been a rainy, grey week, so I haven't spent too much time outside except in the beginning of the week when I was I've taken care of the, um, the vegetable plots, as I said I was going to do last time. I'll, I'll show you that now, what I did there. It's a beautiful afternoon. It's nice to see some sun after a while. It's been pretty grim for the last few weeks, but I'm actually very happy because it was raining and it was just perfect timing. Because as I said last week, I, I laid the hay down as the last, last step and, um, and it really needed to rain so that it could you know, get in there and get moisture in so that it could start decomposing and all the worms could get decomposing everything underneath that I put over under there. So here it is. These are all the vegetable plots. You can see in different stages. This is with the hay on them. Got some more over here. And more over there. So I've got the, the paths and everything. And then afterwards I'll be clearing spaces so that I can put some terreau, you say in French, some, some good earth and, uh, and cut into the cardboard and plant into those uh, probably next week, over the next two weeks, that's what I'm going to be doing. And you can do the different stages. His was the, with the cardboard. So it, it's coming along. But otherwise what I was doing was working a lot inside in the greenhouse with my babies. I've been replanting some of them into bigger pots, you know, like singling them out. I don't know, thinning them, I think you say. Um, and cleaning up generally the earth so it's ready to plant things in there. So let's have a look. Here we are. Doing that. You can see it's a lot, it's a lot more organized, a lot cleaner. And, uh, and things are growing really well. I've planted uh, basil. I've got a huge amount of basil, which is really great. So I've planted it, some of it in the earth. And the rest of it in, in pots, which is already, the first ones I did, they're already starting to get bigger leaves. And these ones I did just yesterday. So there's a whole bunch of those. A lot of basil, be able to make pesto sauces and all kinds of things with that. Apart from that, I also planted, uh, well, I'd already planted that last week, some coriander, which is doing really well. You see it's getting bigger. And there's about five, six roses on the other side of there. And also here. So I'm looking forward to using that in my cooking. And right next to it, you have got sacred basil, otherwise known as Tulsi, Tulsi Rama. In India, in Hindu tradition, they, they worship it. It's considered a sacred plant. It's also very well known for for health benefits and all kinds of other things. And just look at the babies, they're getting really big now. And they're all kinds of, this is borage and the kale is just getting huge. So it really needs to get planted outside in the next week or so. And uh, tomatoes are doing well. Even some of the ones that didn't look so good last week, they're starting to to get better. All kinds of different varieties of tomatoes, got watermelon over there, um, butternut, pumpkin. I replanted some zucchini courgettes in those empty ones there you can see a couple of days ago because they weren't doing so well. And there's a whole bunch of herbs and flowers. Artemisia, this is Artemisia, it's very interesting, look it up. It's a uh, they say you can get lucid dreams with it, which is quite interesting. And it's also a cure for um, malaria, they say, in some traditions. This is Desmodium, which is really good for intoxic de detox. The quinoa is doing a little bit better. I'm going to plant some directly outside. And it's also been a week where I've been um, starting to plant flowers, because, you know, it's, it's, it's like in life, uh, culture and food, or what do you mean, like culture and money are both important, I think, to have an equal, a balanced life. So flowers, beauty is as important as, as eating, you know, it should go together. 
And sometimes you can eat beautiful things like these uh, capucine, I think it's nasturtiums in, in English. You can, you can eat the leaves and uh, they're really good. And they also attract the white bugs and uh, plants. And I'm, I'm looking into companion planting. And these are some flowers I planted, some gladioli and some uh, lilies. Yeah, companion planting is something which is uh, definitely something to look into. It's it's fascinating that the plants they they get on with some other plants and they don't get on with others. They they're like us, you know. They have they're sentient. They 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 can tell um, when a, a plant that they don't like that they'll be in competition with is nearby and they will react to it. And uh, this the book I recommended last week, which was talking about. Um, Thus spoke the plant talks about this idea where the plants communicate with each other. Um, one of the ways is by sound and also by chemicals and uh, all, all, all different ways. It's we're, 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 We know so little about it, but it's all kind of suddenly we're discovering things. If you just listen to the plants, they'll, they'll tell you. And uh, it's fascinating. And take a look at this. I'm getting a... The uh, first harvest of sweet peas. They're really beautiful, beautiful sweet peas. And they're just starting to get fatter, to get the, the peas are swelling. So I'm very much looking forward to eating those. And this is the flower of a pois gourmand or a, a mange true, which is just stunning. Isn't that beautiful? And the turmeric is doing really well. I planted it this week with the ginger on the other side. You can see it starting already to grow. It's been in there for two, three days. And it's looking very happy. And on the other side, you have the ginger. Which is uh, doing pretty good too. As you can see, I have um, I took up, there was a lot of clover and, and different what they call uh, all kinds of stuff growing by itself and I'd kind of let it do that for a while and I came to a bit where it was kind of getting in competition with the other stuff and so I did what's called the chop and drop method whereas I pulled it out not all of it because clover fixes nitrogen as well so I kind of like it so I kept a little little pieces of it and the rest of it I pulled it up and I chopped it up and I made it into like a, a mulch so that'll decompose and it'll nourish the plants that's what's going on here, see? So it's kind of like, this will go in there and nourish. In the flower department, I, uh, I planted some petunias in these pots. They're just starting now, but I like to put petunias in there every year because they smell so good. And when you go into the circle garden, it's just nice to have this kind of wave of aromatic smell that lasts pretty much all through the summer. The sky is incredible today. Just look at that behind me. It's just, uh, the view is so beautiful. Every day I look, it's like a new painting. And check out the cherries. There are gonna be so many cherries. They're just everywhere. Another thing I did was, um, to make a plan of where I'm going to plant everything out there. Since it was raining, I thought, okay, well, I have to work inside. And I worked on the plan, so I'm going to show you that on my computer. Here's the plan. So I've been kind of working, trying to get it together. Trying to figure out where I put everything. Working on companion plants is not, not easy when you're not used to it. But uh, so basically this is how it's going with different flowers. Linseed apparently gets rid of the, the pests that can worry the potatoes. I think it's the dory falls. Uh, quinoa, mixing the quinoa with sweet corn, sweet peas, monstru. The sweet peas will give nitrogen fixing for the sweet corn, which is very hungry for that. Here you've got a whole bunch. Kale, lettuce, spinach all together, green beans and cucumber together. These are called the three sisters, the sweet peas, corn, and squash. They go together. That makes a, a very good combination that the American Indians used to use. Beetroot with watermelon, kale, 
marigold, courgette, melon, eggplant. So there you, there you have it. And then I'm going to do like root vegetables in small. Thought that would be kind of pretty. Make it like that. There we go. Well, it's Sunday night and I'll just say goodbye and look forward to hearing from you. I'm working on some other things as well. I'm working on a YouTube channel tonight as we speak, uh, which I'll put a link into. And uh, basically it'll be the same videos, but on YouTube. And uh, I'm, um, yeah, I'll be working hard all week next week and I'll be happy to keep in touch. Oh yeah, the other thing was I'm also working, I'm going to do a, a French video as well because I am in France. I do kind of speak French, so I thought I might as well do a French version as well for all my French speaking friends. So I'm going to leave you with the view and wish you well and hope you're all looking forward to getting out of your houses and going back into a kind of normal life. Although still, I think we have to be careful. <laughs>